Well, hello, people. I hope you're okay. This is a <clears throat> the first of a series of very short videos just to revise, right? You will have like the whole document, but I will divide the videos into topics so that you can watch only the ones that you really want to watch, all right? The first uh, video, well, the first part is this just a revision of the tenses. Yesterday, one of the students was asking me about this. So I think this is a good uh, opportunity just to talk about the tenses and that's it, right? This is very, very brief. You will have, what are the tenses? What are the tenses that we actually have? We have the simple tenses, yes? And we have present simple and past simple, yes? The simple tenses are the ones in which we change only the verb in the sentence, in affirmative sentences, right? For example, in the present, he goes, uh, I don't know, they come. Yes, just we use the verb. That is a simple tense. That is simple present. In the past, we add ed, le agregamos ed, like visited, or we have a complete change in the verb. Like, for example, in the verb went. Those are the simple tenses. You will see that the other tenses always need an auxiliary all the time, not only in the negative or the question. Yes, simple tenses don't have an auxiliary, no tienen auxiliar en las afirmaciones. There, there is an internal change of the verb. Hay un cambio interno en el verbo. All right? Simple present, we use for routines. Simple past, we use for something completed in the past, all right? An event that is completed in the past. The other aspect that we have is the continuous aspect, yes? Here I am. What is I am showing? The continuous aspect, of course, is ing. And what do we have? We have present continuous, verb to be, the auxiliary, and ing. Then we have past continuous. Yes, that is was or were, verb to be again. Siempre va a ser el verb to be, pero en diferentes conjugaciones. And always the verb with ing. Todos los tiempos continuos termina el verbo con ing. Right here we have present perfect continuous. You know present perfect. And uh, this is like a mix between the present perfect and the present continuous. Why? It has also a double meaning, and we use it to express something that is unfinished, that was in progress at a very recent past, right? En un pasado muy, muy recién, right? Generally, we use present perfect continuous when we have a consequence that is uh, present in the present, okay? Those are the perfect tenses. The, sorry, the continuous tenses, verb to be, ing. Acá tenemos igual la info. The last one is the perfect aspect. The perfect tenses have two characteristics. The first one, they always link one tense and the other, right? One moment and the other. If it is present perfect, it's going to link the present and the past. Present perfect. If it is past perfect, it's going to link two moments in the past. Dos momentos del pasado. That is the past perfect. See, ¿Sí? el past perfect es el pasado del pasado. All right? Uno es un pasado anterior al pasado que es el protagonista de mi acción. That is past perfect. All right? We also have future perfect, but I'm not going to include it here. Maybe we talk about it in the future. Quizá hablemos después del future perfect, así que no lo voy a incluir acá. All right? So remember, we have three big aspects, yes? In tenses. The simple tenses, simple uh, present and simple past, que no tienen auxiliar en el afirmativo, yes? Then we have the continuous tenses, always with ing, yes? And always with verb to be. Siempre tienen verb to be. Is, are, am, was, were. Y siempre tienen ing. Los continuos. En el simple me interesa la acción completa. En el continuo me interesa 
la acción en progreso. No importa cuándo sea, pero en progreso. No importa cuándo termina, pero en progreso. The perfect aspect, as I said before, is a bond, is a link, yes, to something else. ¿Qué es un link que tenemos cuando lo tenemos en la compu, en un WhatsApp o lo que sea? Es algo que me lleva a otro lugar. Well, present perfect and past perfect are like this. They are links, yes? Algo que me une el pasado con el presente o algo que me une un pasado con otro pasado. All right? That is okay as regards tenses. Eso es suficiente eh, para los tiempos verbales. We need the tenses to learn passive voice. Necesitamos conocer la estructura de los tiempos verbales para poder hacer passive voice. Passive voice es el topic de este video. Right? What is the passive voice? Remember I said many times that we use passive voice when we want to move the focus. Yes, that is passive voice. We want to move the focus <clears throat> to the object yes of my sentence here we have the active voice that is the one that we use almost all the time es la que usamos todo el tiempo y la que veníamos aprendiendo siempre where the subject is the most important thing in the passive the subject is not the most important thing anymore right for various reasons por muchas razones puede ser que ese sujeto ya no me interese It can be because I don't know it. It can be because it's not important. Because I don't want to talk about it, right? I just want to emphasize the object, right? Another of the reasons or another reason could be that we want to be more impersonal, more formal. Generally, passive voice is associated with formality. So if you want to be more formal, you are going to use passive voice. If you want to write a text and you want your text to be formal, you are going to use passive voice, right? Okay, you know this. What is the, what's the situation? You know that we have an object that is going to be the most important thing, yes, in the passive, all right? Look at this, yes? The photos, they take the photos, right? In the active sentence, I care about the subject. Me importa el sujeto. Y es la forma en la que hablamos generalmente. In the passive, I don't care anymore about the object, the subject, I care about the object. That's why the object goes in the first place, all right? Va el sujeto, el objeto en primer lugar, lo cambio directamente. I always use a verb to be. Siempre voy a usar un verb to be. And then I will always use a past participle. Siempre voy a usar el past participle. ¿Cómo voy a usar el verb to be? Dependiendo de la oración activa o si no tengo la oración activa, depending on the logic of the situation. If you are speaking, this is like tenses. I have to think in the same way. What do I need now? Do I need a past? Do I need a present? And I will collocate the verb to be in that tense, in the tense that is more logical. All right? En el tiempo verbal que es más correcto. Okay? If you are speaking about tomorrow, it is very probable that you are going to use will be or are going or is going to be. All right? You need the verb to be, necesito poner el verb to be in the tense of the active or in the tense that is logical, right? Here you have all the conversions for most of the tenses. Acá tengo varios de los tiempos verbales. ¿Y cuáles son las conversiones? There you go. And here, I just, I wrote this on the board many times. Escribí esto en el pizarrón varias veces. But just in case, I included in this document how to put the verb to be in the correct way, depending on the tense, right? In the present simple is are am. In the present continuous, am, are, is, all, being. 
cualquiera de las tres, be it. Past simple was were. Past continuous, again, was were being. Present perfect, have or has been. Past perfect, had been. Yes, es el verb to be conjugado en ese tiempo verbal. And then always the past participle. All right? That is the first video. Now I'm going to stop and start again. I hope you find this helpful.